In this video, we're going to look at pulling everything together that we've looked at so far. So that includes the Lewis demo, the Azure AD, Auth, and Microsoft Graph. And we're going to bring it together into a single chatbot. So if you want to follow along, you can pull down the code at GitHub, James E. Mann, Room Booking Bot. We're inside Room Booking Bot chatbot, and we've got our Visual Studio project in here. Um, I just want to draw your attention to this app settings. By default, this is blank, right? All these values um, need filling in. I've uploaded a separate video that you can follow along. It's about four minutes and it basically talks you through how you know how you set up the resources required um, for each of these applications and where you get your configuration from as well. I thought it'd be good to start with a demo of this. I'm just gonna, I've got the solution up and I'm just gonna run it. If I jump over to the emulator first time I connect to it because I haven't connected to it before it's prompting me to log in so I can click that link at this point it's asking me for consent right so it's asking me for permissions to do these things when I click accept it's going to post back to my app running on my local machine which is going to get redirected to the conversation that I'm in so now I'm actually authenticated I can start over so now I can I can ask it something like you know I'd like to book the auditorium for 9 a.m. tomorrow and it's pretty much got all the information that it needs in order to fulfill that request the only thing I need to provide is I can say 60 minutes here and you can see it's checked graph um, if I just switch over to Outlook you'll see uh, tomorrow there's there's no appointments in there so if I just click auditorium at 9 till 10 click OK that's going to book it if I jump back to here you can see it's already come through to, to my calendar and you can see it's booked at the auditorium it was booked by the bot for me ok so I can ask it a few different questions so let's start another chat I can say um, you know I can I can basically say the same thing but I can, you know, maybe say I'd like to book the auditorium for 60 minutes at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Well, obviously, I've just booked that, so it's not going to find any availability. So let me change the time. I'll say 11 a.m. And it's got all the information there. So you can click on that and click OK. And that's, again, it's going to book that meeting through. So the last demo I want to show you is I can be really vague, right? Because obviously not all users are going to know exactly what they want. So I can say something like, I'd like to book a room. Not even say, you know, which room I'm interested in. So here it's asking me which room. So it's disambiguating. So I can say, actually, I don't mind. Um, the day I want to book is Friday. And I want to book it for 10 a.m. Um, and I want it for two hours. And it's pulled back the availability there. So if I click on boardroom, we'll see that appointment come through. And it's booked that appointment in my calendar as well. So there's, there's kind of two ways we can interact with this. Someone who knows exactly what they want and they, they provide a very precise utterance. And then someone who doesn't actually um, particularly know what they want. They're, they're more interested in exploring their options. They can be kind of walked through the process. Hopefully that gives you some context in terms of what the bot looks like. So let's jump into the code and see how we can make this. If we have a look at an example of a conversation where a user um, provides our bot with a, a request, they might say something like, can I book a room between 10 and 11 tomorrow? The first thing we do is identify the intent. And we're using some kind of natural language processing service like Lewis. And we're pulling out the intent, which is book room, the entities, and we have two, we have a start time and an end time. Once we know those, we can basically continue on and we disambiguate. So we, we get all the information we need in order to act on that information. So in our case, we, you know, we, we've identified the start and the end, but we need to also identify the room. So we can go back to the user and say, would you like um, any room in particular? And the user can say, the auditorium identify that as the room at which point we have all the information we need now obviously 
in this simple example we've just got three fields but maybe we've got a um a bot that's capturing loads of different information so we can repeat that process as many times as we need to in order to get all the information we need once we've completed that process we then act on it so this is typically where you'd reach out to a service to take action so in our case we're going to be reaching out to microsoft graph to book the meeting request so to implement that we're basically going to use a, an architecture that uses middleware so we've got four pieces of middleware so whenever we whenever we're doing anything within this middleware the type in middleware makes sure that uh, the user is aware of it by showing a type in message to the user um, the user already authentication middleware you've already seen that's the thing that makes sure you're logged in um, and if if you're not logged in it doesn't proceed to the next middleware then we've got the state middleware and the state middleware is something that we use in for for our dialogues which you'll see in a moment then the last piece of middleware we're using is a spell check so i added this as again another usability improvement because i was as i was testing i was typing in tomorrow i was spelling it wrong and the lewis recognizer wasn't picking up um the word tomorrow so i've added ping spell check which basically goes out to ping um, and automatically corrects all my all my words for me once we've gone through those four pieces of middleware we can then go into the bot and the bot hands off to a bunch of dialogues the important ones are main dialogue and room availability dialogue and those are the things that kind of manage the conversation state so now that you've seen the the bot in action and you understand the the high level architecture i just want to briefly talk about the code now i'm not going to spend too long here because there is quite a lot to look at i just want to jump into to the solution so if we if we just look look what we've got here if you've followed any of my other videos this should look fairly familiar to you so we've got our um we've got our startup class our startup class is the the thing that basically registers our bot we add our four pieces of middleware that we talked about um one thing i just want to draw your attention to um i am used for this demo i am using a in memory auth token storage do not use this for production this is really just for demonstration purposes you need to basically provide your own um, implementation if i just jump into the bot now you'll see that our bot really its sole purpose is to set up the dialogue stack add the main dialogue to it and then start the main dialogue when it needed or continue the, the dialogue context processing that's all it does so really we don't need to worry too much about this just be aware that this is kind of the entry point to the application so if we jump into the main dialogue this is the part of the application that actually does the natural language processing so we get our utterance in as an input we use the lewis runtime client and then we use that to predict intents and entities if the top scoring intent is check room availability then we take those intents and those entities and we create a, an object from that if we just jump into there you'll see basically we're parsing the date time range date time duration and rooms just to kind of populate as, as much of this booking request as we can right so once we've done that we can then create a dictionary stick that in the dictionary and then we start the check room availability dialog which that's the you know the whole disambiguation process so then um, we come into our check room availability dialog um, which is our kind of the only intent that we're looking at here but obviously if you had more intents you could have more uh, dialogues for each intent so all this is doing really is that sort of disambiguation process where it's trying to identify whether you've provided the information that it needs and if you haven't it um it allows you to enter that so we've got things like um disambiguate in the room you know when when the user hasn't provided a room we want to query graph and and then display the available room so that the user can can choose one uh you know when they haven't provided a date we prompt them for the date and they can provide a date and so on finally when we get to the bottom we want to use this search graph dialog and this is the thing that actually acts right so this completes the process so if we jump into here 
all this is doing is basically pulling the booking request that we've built up throughout the dialogue and then it's basically querying office 365 graph we're using the access token that we get from our um, azure ad auth middleware we're getting a number of options we're presenting those options back to the user right so we present them back to the user here and then when the user clicks on on one of those options they'll be the the meeting will actually be booked and they'll be presented with a confirmation okay so that's everything i wanted to show you in terms of the code obviously i could spend you know hours going into it line by line but i don't really think that's the best way for you to understand i think if you can if you are interested have a look at the github repository pull down a code you know set a debugger and and have a go yourself if you do need more information then please leave a comment and let me know because i'm quite happy to um you know to do more videos on this if i need to but if not um i hope you found this useful and um I will see you next time.